Math 230, Cuesta College, I'm Joe Vasta, and today we're covering section 7.1, basic probability. And you can see it looks pretty, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and do our puzzles. Look at our puzzles. Fill in the missing box. So you have to figure out what number goes there in that box. And we'll do another puzzle as well. Fill in the missing box. So figure out which number goes in this box too. You might see some patterns or something like that. So probability, before we start off with this, let's talk about what probability is before we do this problem here. Probability is just another way of saying chance. And we ask these questions every day. What is the chance of rain, etc.? We're saying, what's the probability of rain? So Aristotle invested some time into simple probability concepts. Um, in 1654, the mathematical theory of probability was developed in a series of letters between Pascal and Fermat, and this correspondence was prompted by a gambler by the name of Demir. This was one of his problems. Roll a die four times. So we have a, when they say a, a die, they mean a standard six-sided die. What is the probability or the chance of getting at least one six? So the experiment is to roll the die four times. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So that's a two, three, four, six. Okay, so I got at least one six. I got one six in that little series. So that is Demir's problem. This is the problem that put probability on the map that got Fermat and Pascal writing letters to each other. So this was Demir's answer. I'm going to tell you what Demir did. Demir said the probability of getting one six on a die, so you don't have to pay attention too much to this, this is more historic, is one sixth. And doing it again is one sixth. And doing it again is one sixth. And doing it again is one sixth. So you add that up and you end up getting four sixth, which is really two thirds, which is approximately 67%. But Demir was not winning this game two thirds of the time. He was only winning about half the time and that made a big difference. So when Pascal and Fermat got back to him, they were able to tell him the real answer, which is 671 over 1296. That's approximately 52%. So this problem is pretty tough. We do not know how to do this problem with what we know about probability, which is not much now. We didn't cover too much. But by the end of this chapter, we'll be able to get this answer. We'll come back to this problem because it's a historic problem. So let's go ahead and start off with something a little more basic. But we will come back to this. So we have experiments in probability. What is an experiment? An experiment is a process that can be repeated and may result in different outcomes, like rolling the die. But this experiment is the following. You have this box that contains four blue marbles, three green marbles, and one red marble. You will randomly draw one marble out of the box. That's the experiment. So each time you do this probability, or each time you do this experiment, sorry about that, you end up getting something that could result in a different outcome. This up here is our sample space. Sample space. 
and let's go ahead and answer this question. What is the probability it is blue? What is the chance that it is blue? Well, the definition of probability, and this is a loose definition, is what you want divided by what's in the box. Okay, it's kind of a, a cheap definition of probability, but it will, it will do for this class. I mean, it will do for the level that we are doing probability. What you want, well, what do you want? You want blue. There are four blues. What's in the box? Or another way of saying this is how many um, things in the sample space. Well, there are eight, if you count them. So this is four over eight, which is one half. And so there is our probability. Our probability of pulling a blue marble out of that box is one half. So let's move on to another problem. I can find the other problems. Here they are. Problem number two. Okay, so we have this notation now, and it says P red. So look at the last problem. It said, what is the probability it is blue? Well, lots of times people get lazy and they don't want to write out that whole question there. So now we have this notation. This P stands for probability, and this is what you want. So what is the probability you pull a red out of that box? And we're going to go back to this, what you want divided by what's in the box. Well, what you want is a red, so that goes on the top, one. And what's in the box? Well, how many things in the box? There are eight things. So we end up getting one eighth. There's the answer. By the way, this thing in the parentheses, and also we could have said P blue over here, but that, that thing in the parentheses, that's called an event. Okay, so we're always going to be asking probabilities of events. Let's continue with this one here. You have this box, you're going to draw one marble out of that box. What is the probability that it is yellow? Okay. What you want is not in the box. So what number goes for that? Well, zero. And how many things are in the box? Well, there's still eight things in the box, eight things in your sample space. So you have zero over eight, which is zero. And our last problem for this experiment so probability can be zero. Your last problem is what is the probability you get a non-orange or you get something that is not orange? Well, how many non-oranges do I have in that box? That is what I want. There's eight non-oranges. Over how many things in the box? Eight. Eight over itself is one. And so there we have it. These are our probabilities. This one means it's certain. It's going to happen. And sometimes when they say um, that it's going to rain, they'll say the um, chance of rain is, they don't say one, they say 100%, which is 100 over 100, which really is one. So this is like 100%. It's going to happen. There's no way you can reach into that box and pull out something that is orange. So the probability of pulling out a non-orange is one. And then like with this, the probability here is zero, which means it's never going to happen. So the funny thing about probabilities is they are real numbers, and they are real numbers between zero and one. Look, one eighth is between zero and one. One half is between zero and one. So all of our probabilities are between zero and one, and they can include zero and one.
So you'll never have a probability of like five or negative one half because your probabilities must lie between zero and one. Let's go ahead and do some more experiments. We start off with some pretty basic ones. So some of you might have already fallen asleep. <laughs> so it's time to wake up and get on to the next one. But things will get complicated, even within this lecture, more complicated than this. So our next experiment is you toss a penny. When you toss a penny, we're assuming that you are tossing this on hard ground like concrete. Then there are two things that can happen, two events. And one of them is that the penny can land heads up. So I'll make that a marble in the box. And the other possibility is it, it can land tails up. So when you toss a penny to see whether it's going to land on heads or tails, it's the same as getting rid of that penny, getting this box, having two marbles in the box, one with an H and one with a T, and pulling one of the marbles out of the box. So all of our probability problems can be modeled using marbles in the box. Now you probably already wrote out the answer to this, the probability of heads. Well, what do you want? There's one thing in the box that you want. So that goes in the numerator or the top of the fraction. And then what's in the box? How many marbles are in the box? Two. That goes in the denominator or the bottom. So the probability of tossing a penny and it, and it coming up heads is one half, which was the same as the probability of pulling a blue marble out of that box. Okay, so the one half is an answer that comes up from time to time. And when we toss pennies or other coins in this class, we're going to assume that this is a fair coin. There are some coins out there that are not fair, and um, that's for a more advanced study of probability. So let's go ahead and move on to our next experiment. There's not much we could do with this experiment. I mean, we could say, what is the probability of its tails? And okay, we don't need to do that. Okay, our next experiment is to roll a die. So this right here is a standard die. And it's a standard fair die. Okay. It's not a loaded die and it looks like this. It has one through six on it and so when you are drawing your sample space you are going to put six marbles in that box and those six marbles are going to be numbered one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there it is. So rolling this die, and we say rolling it, but tossing it or whatever, is the same as pulling a marble out of this box. So let's do a few probabilities on this experiment, even though this one is a basic example as well. But we need to get familiar with coins and dice and playing cards as well, and that, that's coming up after this. What is the probability you get an even number? Well, how many even numbers do you have in that box? One, two, three. Three out of six marbles. Three out of six equals one half. Which is the same as the probability of um, tossing a heads and it's the same as the probability of getting the blue from that box. So once again, one half came up again. What is the probability you roll an even number or you pull out an even number or a three? 
And notice the next one, it says even number and a three. So this is going to come up from time to time in probability, the ors and the ands. So let's take a look at even numbers. The even numbers look like this. Two, four, six. And then we have a three. So I'm trying to get another color here. Three looks like that. So how many things are in the box that we want? Even numbers or three, so orange or green. Well, it looks like one, two, three, four. So this equals four on the top. And on the bottom, you have six marbles in the box, so we, we have that. In fact, all of the denominators are going to start off with sixes on the bottoms before we reduce them in this experiment. So four sixths reduces to two thirds. And that is the probability of rolling an even number or a three. Now notice this one says an even number and a three. Well, can you ever roll an even number and a three? No, three is not an even number. So we probably already know what the answer is going to be. There is nothing in this box that is circled in both green and orange. Okay, so this might remind you of the intersection, and this might remind you of the union. And we'll, we'll do more of these and point them out more obviously in, in other examples. But there's nothing that's both orange and green, so what we want, there's zero in the box, and then there's six things in the box total. So the answer for this probability is zero. So that's rolling a die. You'll get some of that in your homework. And now we move on to this right here. You draw a single card from a deck of 52 playing cards. If you're not familiar with playing cards, that's all right. We have the playing cards right here. And with these playing cards, you're going to be drawing one card from them. So think of these playing cards as 52 marbles. have aces, that's what the A stands for, and there's four aces, and then we have hearts, diamonds, um, spades, and clubs. And so you have the aces, twos, threes, all the way through tens, and then you have jacks, queens, kings. The jack, queens, and kings are sometimes referred to as face cards because they have faces on them. So let's get back to our problems here. You're going to draw a single card from this box here. Draw a marble from this box. What is the probability you end up getting a black card? Well, how many black cards are there in the box? And you can count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then another 13. So there's 26 of them all over there are 52 marbles in the box. Some of you may have skipped this step because you saw that a, like half of the, the cards happen to be black cards. So that does reduce to one half. Okay, let's do our next probability here. What is the probability you end up getting a face card? Well, how many face cards do we have? The face cards are over here, your jacks, queens, and kings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are twelve face cards. And the number of cards in the deck, well, there are 52 of them. So I'm going to write 
52 on the bottom. I'm going to see what goes into both 12 and 52. I think 4 does. 4 goes into 12 3 times and 4 goes into 52 13 times. So this gives me 3 over 13. Okay, now what we have in the next two problems, we have the or and we have the and, just like in problems 7 and 8. But this says, what is the probability you get a black card or a face card? And this one says, what is the probability you get a black card and a face card? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and circle all the black cards. Just pick the color here in purple. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and circle all the face cards in a different color, brown. So when we're asked the question, black card or face card, well, what you want to do is count everything in the purple circle along with the things in the brown circle without counting these guys two times. And that's the common mistake people do. Sometimes people count up. So what a lot of people will do is they'll say there's 26 black cards and 12 face cards. And so the top of their fraction they write as 38 because they added both of those. But we're not going to do that because you've counted these guys, these six cards, twice. What you're going to do is you're going to just count them all. So if you count all the black cards, you do get 26. So I have 26 if I count everything in the purple circle. And then 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So 32 goes on the top of the fraction. That's what you want. And then how many cards are in the box? We have 52 cards in the box. And 4 goes into each of those. 4 goes into 32 8 times. 4 goes into 52 13 times. And so in your homework you're going to want to have reduced fractions. Um, you don't want to take out a calculator and do just approximations. I'm looking for fractions that are reduced. Okay, So 8 over 13 is the answer to what is the probability you get a black card or a face card. Problem 12 says what is the probability you get a black card and a face card. So the black cards and the face cards happen to be just right here, these six cards. So the and problem, the one that we're doing now, is the intersection of those two. I'm, I'm calling them circles even though they're not circles, but I'll just continue to abuse the language. It's the intersection of the purple circle and the brown circle. Whereas number 11 was the, the or, and that was the union. So black cards and face cards, there's only six of them. So in the box there are six things that I want. over 52 cards. So that's 6 over 52. Let's see, 2 goes into both of those. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 52 26 times. And there's not much more we can do with that. So this becomes 3 over 26. So we had another example of ors and ands, and in this example you can definitely see how the or is really the, the union and the and is the intersection when you draw circles around them like that. Okay, let's move on to the next experiment. The experiments are going to get a little bit more complicated as time goes by, and by the way I will include 
this in the PDF. So if you're looking at the PDFs, I'll include the playing cards just for the people who want to have that when you're doing your homework. Okay, let's get problem number 13 going. You toss a penny and a quarter. Okay, so now what we have is we're tossing two coins. So how do we do this? So now it's hard to imagine marbles in a box. Well, let's think about this. If you're tossing a penny and then a quarter how many things can happen when you toss a penny? Well two things. You can make it land tails or make it land heads. And how many things can happen when you toss a quarter? Two things. So guess what? You're going to have two times two which is four events. You're going to have four marbles in the box. Now what are these marbles going to be? Well these marbles are going to look like this. The penny can land heads and the quarter can land heads. So that's one of the marbles. The penny can land heads and the quarter can land tails. So you have to think of all the things that can happen when you toss a penny and a quarter. Let's see, so there's four marbles and we have two of them so far. What about the penny landing tails and the quarter landing heads? I need one more, so I guess we have to count the situation where they both land on tails. Does this remind you of anything? This should remind you of truth tables. Remember alternates by one there and alternates by two on the first column. This is like true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. A little confusing because my falses are T's in this one, but this is the sample space right there. That's what goes in the box. There are four marbles, which we figured out that's how many there would be. And now, because we have our box drawn with the marbles in it, we can come back and answer this probability question. So, what is the probability of getting at least one tail? At least one tail means one tail or more. So, one tail or more means that guy right there, that guy right there, and tail, tail. So the probability is what you want, how many things in the box that you want. Well, there are three things in the box. How many marbles in the box? Four marbles. And so this is one way to approach tossing two coins, is to do it this way and draw out your marbles. Now, if you take a statistics class, they try to give you some formulas, and that's cute and all, it works. But for what we're doing in this class, this will work for us completely. And hopefully, this is the less confusing way. So, we're going to go ahead and do a more complicated example where we're going to toss three coins. You know, and so maybe the first one's going to say heads, 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 and you'll have to draw a sample space. And it's probably going to be more than four. So let's just look at the problem here. It says you toss a dime, a nickel, and a penny. What is the probability you get exactly two heads? Maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can do this one, even though it's tougher than problem 13. <clears throat> so problem 14. You could start off like this and you can say, oh, this is the dime, this is the nickel, and this is the penny. And two things can happen with the dime, and two things can happen with the nickel, and two things can happen with the penny. And you multiply them together and say, oh, there's eight. 
marbles in the box. Well, let's start drawing out all the marbles. We can get heads, heads, heads. And then, well, let's treat this like a truth table. The last column we alternate by ones until we have eight um, rows here. The middle one we alternate by twos. So head, head, tail, tail, head, head, tail, tail. And then the first column we alternate by fours. So four heads and four tails. We also saw when we did change of base that we, um, when we count it from zero to seven in binary, it looked just like this. I'm going to go ahead and um, turn these into marbles. These are kind of flattened marbles. Oh well, that's all right. There's eight marbles in the box. Here's the box. Let's go ahead and do this probability. Once you have your sample space, this part is relatively simple. You are now looking for exactly two heads. So you just go down here until you see two heads. Oh, here we have this one right here. We have this one right here. That one right there. So it looks like there's three things in the box that I want over how many things in the box. Well, there's eight things in this box. And there's your answer, three eighths. Now, is this problem being done in statistics classes? Absolutely. Are they making these problems more complicated than this? Absolutely. Like on this problem, they would, they would take out combinations and they would say three choose two divided by two to the third. And they would um, do that. And that's cute, it does work. But in this class, our approach is the simplest method, okay? There's a time and place for formulas and combinations and that's when numbers get really high, like if you're tossing 20 coins. We're not gonna be doing that in our homework or on the test. So this is gonna be good enough. Let's go ahead and move on to our next example. You roll a pair of dice. Okay, so when there's one of them, we say it's a die. When there's more than one, it's a pair of dice. And so here's a pair of dice right there. The question is, what is the probability that the sum is seven? Okay, so what are we gonna have to do here? We are gonna have to draw the sample space. How do I draw the sample space? Well, start off by putting the red die on the left and the blue die on the right. And we could start off by saying both dice could show ones. I'm going to put that in the sample space. So red, one, blue, one. Then I can say, well, the red die can have a one and the blue die can have a two. So I have one, two. The red die can have a one, the blue die can have a three. One, three, and so on. One, four, one, five, and one, six. Okay, so now here's the deal. We've run through the red die being one and the blue, blue die being whatever we can consider what if the red die is two that we can take the blue die back down to one and we have another marble in the box that has a red two 
and a blue one. So the common mistake people make is they get these guys confused. They go, well, isn't that the same thing? Well, yes, when you're playing Monopoly with two white dice, that is pretty much the same thing. But still, they are different when you're using different color dice. Even if you're using the same color dice, there are two things in the box that have this, where you know one of the dice has a one and the other one has a two, and then you can switch it around where the first die had a two and the second die had a one. So that's why I chose to use two different color dice. But if they were both white dice, we would still write this out like this. Okay, so then we can go two, two, etc. So we'll go red two, blue three, red two, blue four, red two, blue five, red two, blue six. Now, maybe what we could have done is we could have said, well, look, there's a pair of dice. The first die can land on six different things, and the second die can land on six different things. Six times six is 36 marbles in this box. Okay, so we'll continue. You guys see the pattern here. Look, three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five, and three, six. And then, I wasn't moving that around there, the, then the red die can have a four, and we can go through the possibilities. Here's a quick way of doing this. Four, 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 four. So I don't have to keep switching pens here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the red die can have a five. So I'll just write all the fives down. And uh, we go through one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the red die can start off with a six. So I'll write six down the line here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. If you count these marbles, you will count 36 of them. And I know what you're saying right now, um, Joe, are you going to circle? these and make 36 marbles yeah uh, you know what i'll pause the video circle them and then unpause them okay so i put circles around them and actually we'll draw a box so a few things to point out before we start doing our problems here i would say that like 92 percent of the problem is done for problem 15 by drawing this Know that half of the statistics are made up on the spot. I think I just made that up. But a lot of our problem is done by drawing this. So, a few things to point out. We're going to have to do this again in, like, the next section. And so, the next time I do this, I'm going to use the same color. Because it's just easier to, to write the same color down without switching pens. The second thing to realize is, look at this. This looks like an 11, doesn't it? So, sometimes psychologically so I can go faster when I draw my sample space I just think 11 12 13 14 15 16 and I can actually draw them faster when I think that and then this is 21 22 23 through 26 31 through 36 etc so that's another thing the other thing to consider is we won't ask this in the homework but what if you roll three dice and you had to draw the sample space well, let's say the third die is green. Well, then what you would do is you would put a green one in front of all those numbers. You'd have 36 of them. And then you would then repeat these marbles and take them up a level and put a green two in front of them. 
and then take it up a level and put green 3 in front of those ones and green 4, green 5, green 6. Instead of having a square of marbles, you would have a cube of marbles, which would be 6 times 6 times 6. I think that's 216. That would be a lot in your sample space. So that is the deal if you had three dice, which you won't do in your homework. There are ways of doing three dice. So in, a, in a future section, we will consider more than two dice, but we're, we don't want to draw over 200 marbles. Maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can do some of these problems here. What is the probability that the sum is seven? Okay. So we're extra careful to use the word sum. So if I just said probability seven, it wouldn't be descriptive enough. So sometimes we are not gonna use sums like on 18 and 19. So this is the sum of seven. So look in the, in the box and see what you have for sum of seven. Well, look at this. We have this one right here, one and six. One plus six is seven, two plus five, three plus four, four plus three, and look where all the sevens are showing up. All the sevens are showing up along this kind of diagonal. And how many did I circle? Well, you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six out of 36 marbles in the box. We want to reduce our fractions, and we know that 6 goes into 6 and into 36, so we can reduce this to 1 sixth. So that's how we do these problems. The sample space, and because I drew out the sam sample space systematically, meaning it looks like it's kind of in order, we're able to do this problem really efficiently. Okay, so this was number 15. Sum is seven. Let's do number 16. What is the probability that the sum is four? Well, now we go ahead and circle all the ones that sum up the four, which would be a one and a three, two and a two, three and a one. Looks like there's only three of them. And so what I want in the box, there's three of them, and then this is over 36. So three goes into 36 12 times, so our answer is 1 12th. So it's twice as likely you roll a seven, sum of seven when you're playing Monopoly, than um, rolling a sum of four. And that explains why when you're playing Monopoly, or any other game with a pair of dice, that the snake eyes or the one one doesn't come up as often as the sum of seven because there's just more in the sample space. Let's go ahead and do the next one. What is the probability the sum is an odd number? Okay, so we want to circle all the ones that have odd numbers. Well, oh, well, the, before we do this, look at the sum. The sum of 4 also shows up along a diagonal. Here's the sum of 5 and the sum of 6, and we already saw the sum of 7. So sums show up along the diagonals. The sum is an odd number. We'll use this green for that. So the first diagonal has a sum of 2, so that's not what we want. We want the sum to be an odd number, which would be these guys here. The ones that have sum 3, the ones that have sum 5, the ones that have sum 7, the sum, the sum 9 here, and sum 11. Now, if you take a look at that picture, which is getting pretty polluted with different colors, if you're trying to focus in on the green, it looks like I've circled every other 
marble, and that is true. I mean, you can count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I've circled 18 marbles in green out of 36. And if you're pretty good with arithmetic, you see that 18 goes into 36 two times. So this reduces to 1 half. So the probability that the sum is an odd number is 1 half. What is the probability? Exactly one die came up six. Okay, exactly one die came up six. Was going to use, I gotta be careful which colors I use because I've already got red and blue. So I'm gonna use brown for this. Exactly one die came up six. Well, exactly one die came up six, this would qualify right here, one six. Because one of the die, one of the dice came up six. Same with two six, three six, four six, five six. Now six six, I'm not going to circle because that's not exactly one die coming up six. That's two dice coming up six. But the other ones I'm going to circle would be these. Now I'm going to be a little lazy about circling. Look at that. So how many dice are circled in the brown color? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like we can put our answer over here, ten over thirty-six. And that's going to reduce. You can divide each of those out by two, so we have five over eighteen. And that gives us the answer to problem number 18. Okay, before we um, switch experiments, let's go ahead and do problem number 19. You might try pausing the video and see if you can do this. I'm going to circle this event in purple. Both dice show different numbers. Okay, both dice show different numbers. That's like most of the marbles in the box. The only ones that you have both dice showing the same numbers would be along this kind of diagonal right there. So both dice showing different numbers, whoops, you can't see that purple there, I'll just go like that, would be these guys right here in that triangle. And those guys in that triangle. So if you were to count them, there's clever ways of doing this. I mean, you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then that actually looks like there's 15 over there. So it looks like what we have circled in purple is 30 over 36. Now you could have said, oh, look, we only have six that are not circled, so you could have gone 36 minus 6, which would give you the 30 as well. That's called complementary probability, and we'll talk about that in a future section. So we can see that probably 6 goes into both of those numbers, so this thing reduces to 5 over 6, because 30 divided by 6 is 5, 36 divided by 6 is 6. And there is our final answer for this experiment. And yes, this got pretty polluted just because we were doing five problems. So let's go ahead and do another kind of problem. And these are the kinds of problems you'll get in your homework. So if you're kind of paying attention to the lecture, the homework should not be that big of a deal. Experiment. You spin the spinner, so there's a spinner there, and you toss a penny. So what do I draw for marbles in the, in the box? Looks like two things happen. You do the spinner, and then you toss a penny. Now, with spinners, we want to set some ground rules. We're going to assume that the spinner I think that's called this. I think the arrow thing's called the spinner, and then the big thing's called the spinner as well. The, or we can call the arrow the spinny thing. We're going to assume the spinny thing does not land on a border. But if it did land on a border, you could always say you can spin it again. 
And some of you aren't happy with that, so maybe you remember when you were a kid and you played the game of life. And some of you are like, I'm, I'm still playing that game right now. But I mean, I'm talking about that, like, board game, the game of life where it had a spinner and it had the little... Remember, it would make the noise. That would be the funnest part about that game. And then also putting the little people in the cars. That, that was pretty cool. Well, you would spin the spinner, and if it didn't get past that little plastic peg, then, then it means it, you know, like, let's say it's going around, do, 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 and then it doesn't get past the plastic peg that's there, then we would just say that's a two and not a three. It has to click past that peg. So there's lots of ways where we could deal with the spinny thing not landing on a border, but it's never going to land on a border when we do these. How many things can happen when you spin the spinner? Well, four different things. And those four things are equally likely. With a fair coin or a fair penny, there are two things that can happen. So when I multiply that together, I get four times two, which is eight. So inside my box, there will be eight marbles. Now, can life get a little bit more complicated where there's a spinner where the four section or sector is bigger than the two sector? Yeah, things can get a lot more complicated in probability, but in this class, we try to keep it basic. This is just an introduction to probability. Um, two or tails. Okay, so before we do these, let's go ahead and draw our sample space. Our sample space is the spinner can land on one, and the coin can land on heads. Okay, the spinner can land on one, and this thing can land on tails. The penny can land on tails, sorry. So then you can do spinner lands on two and heads, Spinner lands on two, penny lands on tails, and then we can do three heads, three tails, and then four heads, four tails. There's your sample space right there. There are the eight marbles. I'll actually draw the marbles. I don't think I need to pause the video to do that because there's only eight of them. So this box makes it a lot easier. And now I had a professor at the college who, when I took that statistics class, or maybe it was a probability class, they said you can model all your probability problems with marbles in a box. And when he said that, it made probability so much easier for me. Probability of a two or a tails. And then this one is probability of two and tails. I'm going to circle my twos in orange. I'm going to circle my tails in blue. Okay, how many twos or tails do I have? Well, it looks like two sets. You know from set theory and the or is the union or you if you don't want to think of set theory and Venn diagrams just say hey um, I need a two or a tail and that one qualifies because this is the inclusive or with the two tails satisfy so you know you can count them one two three four five five is what I want from the box and how many things are in the box eight that cannot be reduced, so 5 eighths is my answer. Now, the probability of getting two and tails, well, how many do you have that are in both orange and blue? It's just this guy right here, two tails. That's the only one where it's two and tails, and there's only one of those marbles in the box out of eight. And so that takes care of the spinner penny problem. 
you get something like this in your homework, this is what you do. You draw the box. This right here is a bit optional. It's good because it tells you how many marbles are going to be in the box, but there's a lot of people who just jump right to the box. Okay, let's analyze. this game here. So there is a branch of math called game theory and what they do is they study games and they look at probabilities of winning games and losing games and actually economics majors will sometimes take a game theory class because um, they want to use some of those strategies to make money. Experiment. Alice spins the spinner on the left and Bob spins the spinner on the right and the spinners are equally partitioned, you know, for this one half and half and then one third, one third, one third, so this is going to work out nicely. What is the probability Alice spins a larger number than Bob? What is the probability Bob spins a larger number than Alice? <sighs> okay. You look at this and you don't see marbles in a box, but actually there are marbles in the box with this experiment. So let's just ask the question how many things can happen when Alice spins her spinner? Two things. How many things can happen when Bob spins his spinner? Three things. Two times three is six. So guess what? You're gonna have six marbles in the box. Your first marble, well let's start off with a two. Alice gets a two. Bob gets a 2. And so Alice's number will be first when I draw these marbles. Okay. Alice can get a 2. Bob can get a 3. Alice can get a 2. Bob can get a 5. Okay, so we've exhausted Alice's two. Now we're going to go over here and say Alice can get a four. Bob can get a two. Alice can get a four. Bob can get a three. Alice can get a four. Bob can get a five. So this is really the game here. You can go up to Alice and Bob, take their spinners away and say, ah, you're just going to play this game where instead of each of you spinning a spinner, you have somebody draw a marble out and we can figure out the winner that way. It's not as exciting as spinners, but this really describes our experiment. So now we can come over here. Now remember, Alice is the first number, Bob is the second number. What is the probability Alice spins a larger number than Bob? So Alice spins a larger number than Bob. We'll circle those in red. So 2-2, two, two, no. They're both the same. 2-3, Alice gets a 2, Bob gets a 3. Nope, Alice does not have a larger number and she doesn't have a larger number there. But she does have a larger number on the marble that says 4-2. And... 4-3. But 4-5, her number is smaller than Bob's. So probability, what you want, how many things in the box do you want? Well, there are two. Over, what's in the box? How many marbles in the box? Three. Two six reduces to one third. So there's the answer for that. Problem number 23. What is the probability that Bob spins a larger number than Alice? So we'll make those ones be in this green color here. Bob spins a larger number than Alice. Well, that wouldn't be 2, 2, but it would be anywhere where the second number is bigger than the first number. So that guy right there. That one that one right there. So how many things in the box are marbles that I want? Well three of them in this problem. So three out of 
6 marbles, which is 1 half. Now, if spinning a larger number wins the game, then Bob has the better spinner. So we've already analyzed, we've done elementary game theory where we can tell you just by looking at probabilities which spinner is better for the game high number wins. And it would be this spinner. Sometimes the spinner that has three numbers is worse than the one that has two numbers and it depends what these numbers are. And you can analyze games using probability and that's what they do in game theory. So there we have that experiment. Let's go on to some miscellaneous problems. An American roulette wheel has 18 red slots, 18 black slots, and two green slots. What is the probability that the ball lands on red? So what's up with this problem? So we're looking at American Roulette, 18 red, 18 black, 2 green. Well, the first thing to realize is we point out that this is an American Roulette wheel. So you go somewhere in Europe, their roulette wheels can be different in the fact that they'll still have 18 red, 18 black, and they'll have 1 green. Those ones are actually better to play on than this one here because these are your house numbers here. And um, really with roulette, even if you're playing it in Europe, it's always against you. Your expected value, whatever that means, is negative. So what we want to do is, is what's the probability the ball lands on red? Okay. So let's draw our box. We'll draw the box right here. And in the box we have 18 red slots. Okay, so we're just gonna say 18 reds. Red marbles. And 18 black slots, well, our box has 18 black marbles. Now I know with roulette, it's more complicated, like you have a red five, and you know, there's different numbers that are red and different numbers that are black, but that's not gonna help us with this. That's gonna make it more complicated. So it also says we have two green slots. So two green. What is the probability that the ball lands on red, which means, it's, so if you've seen roulette before, um, you see the roulette wheel goes around and the ball lands in one of the slots. But another way of playing roulette is just having these marbles in the box and not doing the wheel. It's not as neat looking, but, it, but it's the same game. So we're asked, what's the probability you pull a red out of that box? Well, how many reds do you see in the box? There's 18, that's what I want. Now, how many things are in the box? Well, 18 plus 18 is 36. 37, 38, that's, so that's counting the green. So we have 18 over 38. Now that reduces because two goes into each of those. Two goes into 18 nine times, two goes into 38 19 times. So there's your answer, nine over 19. Now what we have not been doing in here, because we've just been focusing on uh, setting up sample spaces, is we really haven't been thinking about what these numbers mean. If you actually went 9 over 19, maybe you did this on a calculator or whatever, you would end up getting 47%. So I've seen people come in, slap like $100 on red. Now, if it doesn't come up red, they lose their $100. And if it does, they get their $100 back plus another $100. 47%. So it's a little against them, isn't it? And I've seen people put the 100 down and just lose it and then walk away. So you got to be careful. You don't want to fall into the gambling trap um, with even money, you know, like when it pays you one to one in Vegas or wherever you're gambling, this will always be less than 50%. And then you might say, well, I will go over to the poker tables because then I have a fair chance. Well, um, the dealers, 
know how to do a lot of things that you might not think they know how to do when they're dealing the cards. I'm not saying all the dealers are cheating, but they are good at poker too, so there's probabilities associated with that. We won't get into that anymore. Let's get into this one right here. A class has six boys and ten girls. So let's draw that out. Six boys. We're trying to find my blue pen. Here it is. Six boys and ten girls. There it is. Now what does this look like? It looks like a box that has what? Six blue marbles and ten green marbles. If a student from the class is selected at random, that means we're not really, you know, we just close our eyes and select one of the students. What is the probability that the student is a boy? So probability student is a boy or a blue. Okay, so I mean, I'll just say boy. I'm probably confusing some of you by uh, re making these replacements. So what's the, probab what's the probability you pull a blue out of that box? Well, there are six blues in the box. And the total number of marbles in that box are 16. The total is 16, sorry. And so when you reduce this, you end up getting three eighths. And that completes this section on probability. Let's take a look at the puzzles and see what we have to say about the puzzles here. Fill in the missing box. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way. So what goes in that missing box? What number? What we're going to do is we're going to go like this. Some of you are really not going to like what I do here. And that should help you out. Okay, so look at when you're doing this, you end up getting, you're adding these two six digit numbers here. So nine plus seven is 16, carry the one. And then this gives me 13, 14, carry the one, 11, carry the one, 12, and then 13 and the eight. So it's like I added two six digit numbers and that's a six there. Our last puzzle here. What goes in the box? Fill in the missing box. Well, what are we gonna do with this one here? What we're gonna do is take a look at like I mean, you do see the ones there, so that might remind you of Pascal's triangle. And look at this three here. You could say that maybe it's gotten from adding those three ones. So look at this five. It's gotten by adding what? Above, um, to the left, and this diagonal that's above to the left. So we have three plus one plus one is five, and then seven's gotten five plus one plus one. Let's see if they all work. Yeah, that's 5, 13, 5 plus 5 plus 3, 25. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those three numbers together. And that should give me 50, 63. 63 goes in the box. So that's how you do that puzzle. The survival game. So this is a great probability example and how probability can be used for evil, um, which is not a good thing. And so you've got two candy bowls or two boxes and red denotes poison. Okay, so maybe the candy's all the same color, but for the simplicity of this problem, we'll say that there's five blue pieces of candy and six red pieces of candy. And over in this bowl, you have three blue and four red. Now you're really, really hungry and you want one piece of candy. You've got to decide which box to take one piece of candy out of. And you want to live, really. So um, you are going to do some survival probabilities. 
So that's what we're going to do. Survival. And so here's the first, this right here, I've got that set up right there. And I put them in a glass here. And then here's your three blue and four reds. And so you're going to like close your eyes and pick candy from one of these. Which one is it going to be, the left one or the right one? Okay, I'm going to take, maybe I'll put these up here. Now they kind of create a shadow, but we have these and we'll bring these back for the future games here. So the survival rate for the first one is going to be 5 out of 11. Okay, so if you put that on a calculator or you do some long division on a piece of paper, you get approximately 45% survival. Meanwhile, on the right side, if you were to take a piece of candy from here, your survival probability would be 3 out of 7. 3, that's what's, what I want in the box, out of 7, the total number. 3 out of 7, if you go ahead and figure out what that is approximately, it's 43%. So the survival game is you want to survive, so which box or you know, candy bowl are you going to pick from if you have to pick one piece of candy? Um, you'll pick from this one right here. So that's the winner. Okay, now, I mean, your survival rate doesn't look so good, but it's a little better than this. And if your life is on the line, you're probably going to go with this one here. Let's go ahead and do another one. Game number two. So game number two, we have six blues, three reds in that one right there. And um, in this one right here, we have nine blues and five reds. So you're going to pick from one of these candy bowls one piece of candy um, knowing that the red ones are poison you're gonna like maybe you'll have your eyes closed and you'll put one in your mouth which one do you want to pick from this one or that one so let's put these aside and crank out some probabilities so we're gonna look at our survival Probabilities and the survival probability for this left box here would be six out of and we have nine Marbles total so six out of nine and if you actually round that to the nearest whole number percentage we get 67% Meanwhile on the right hand side your survival probability is nine out of the total number of candies in there, that would be 14. 9 out of 14, if you go ahead and round to the nearest whole percentage, it's about 64%. So which one is it going to be? Well, if you want to survive, you want to maximize your chances of surviving, the guy on the left, the candy bowl on the left, is the winner. Okay, so now watch what I do, and I'll show you this problem after I do it. I'm going to take these two boxes of candy. I'm going to take. A, I'm going to get a bigger box, and I'm going to mix them all together. So those were my two winning horses, and now they're mixed together in a big, bigger cup here. And then I've got these guys right here. You know, this was the three blue, four red, and then this is nine blue, five red. I'm going to get a bigger container. And that's what I'm going to do. So now I've poured the candy in from both of my winning horses. And then th these were the ones that we really didn't want to pick candy from, and I put them over here. Okay, so now which one, if you had to choose, would you close your eyes, blindly pick a piece of candy, and put it in your mouth knowing that the red ones are poison? So we want to kind of think that it would be this one. Let's analyze it using the numbers. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so what do we have? 
what I did is I mixed these two boxes together. So now I have 11 blue, because 5 plus 6 is 11, and the reds would be 6 plus 3 is 9. Okay, so that's what I have in this one right here. Over here, I went 3 plus 9 is 12 blues, and then 4 plus 5 is 9 reds, and that's what I have in that one. So let's go ahead and look at our survival probabilities. Um, the survival probability for the um, box on the left would be 11 over total marbles, that would be 20. And if you do the percentage on that, that's about 55%. Meanwhile, we have the survival probability for this one is going to be 12 over, you add those numbers, so the total number of marbles in that box would be 21. And if you compute that on a calculator, you'd get, round into the nearest whole percentage, 57%. So which box is better? It's that. It's almost like we had these two winning horses and then we kind of like put them all together into one giant horse thinking it was going to be the winning horse and it was really when you mix these guys together that one gave you a better survival probability. So this is known as, has a few names, Simpsons Paradox. It also is, is called Simpsons Reversal or the Yule Simpson Effect. There's other names for it. And this is what happens in the real world sometimes. Sometimes people do this on purpose to trick people. And now this happened if there was a case at UC Berkeley and it was about gender bias. And this was brought up in court this Simpsons Paradox. Um, I'm sure it's used for a lot of other things and people might use it for worse. I mean, think of voting and, um, and putting districts together for who are gonna vote for Democrats and Republicans and gerrymandering. So there's a lot of things to be aware of when you study probability. And now we get a little into statistics and sampling and things like that. And so there's many, many, many applications of what we are doing in this section. So that completes section 7.1. Do your homework. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.